The Knudsen number is a dimensionless parameter that compares the mean free path of gas molecules, which is the average distance a molecule travels before colliding with another, to a characteristic length scale of the system, such as the diameter of a microchannel. It is crucial in determining the flow regime of gases. For low Knudsen numbers, less than 0.01, gases behave like continuous fluids, continuum flow, while high Knudsen numbers, more than 10, indicate free molecular flow where individual molecular movements dominate. For instance, in microfluidic devices with very small channels, a high Knudsen number would mean that traditional fluid dynamics models are inadequate, requiring kinetic theory to accurately describe gas behavior. This distinction is vital for the precise design and operation of systems like lab-on-a-chip devices and microscale heat exchangers. Named after Danish physicist Martin Knudsen, this number provides a simple yet powerful way to determine whether we can treat a gas as a continuous fluid or if we need to consider the individual behavior of its molecules. The Knudsen number is like comparing the distance you can walk in a busy market before bumping into someone to the width of the market's main pathway. Imagine the mean free path as the distance you can walk before colliding with someone in a crowded market. If the pathway is very wide compared to how far you can walk without bumping into others, it's like a low Knudsen number. The crowd moves smoothly, like a continuous flow. But if the pathway is narrow compared to your walking distance, it's like a high Knudsen number. Everyone moves individually, dodging and weaving to avoid collisions. In microfluidics, knowing whether the market or microchannel is crowded or spacious helps engineers decide how to design systems for smooth operation, like ensuring efficient airflow in tiny lab-on-a-chip devices or microscale cooling systems. The Knudsen number, or Ken, is defined as the ratio of two characteristic lengths. The mean free path, denoted by lambda of the gas molecules and a characteristic length scale, denoted by L, of the system under consideration. Mathematically, it can be expressed as Ken equals lambda divided by L. This deceptively simple formula encapsulates a profound concept. The mean free path represents the average distance a molecule travels between collisions with other molecules. The characteristic length scale, on the other hand, represents the size of the physical system, or the length scale of the flow features being studied. Consider a gas flowing through a pipe. In this case, the characteristic length scale, L, could be the diameter of the pipe. If the pipe diameter is much larger than the mean free path of the gas molecules, meaning Kn is much less than 1, the gas molecules will collide with each other much more frequently than they collide with the pipe walls. Under these conditions, the gas behaves like a continuous fluid, and we can use classical fluid dynamics to describe its behavior. However, if the pipe diameter is comparable to or smaller than the mean free path, where Kn is greater than or equal to 1, molecule wall collisions become dominant, and the gas no longer behaves like a continuum. To fully grasp the significance of the Knudsen number, we need to understand the concept of the mean free path, or lambda. Imagine a single molecule moving through a gas. This molecule will travel in a straight line until it collides with another molecule, at which point its direction changes randomly. The distance this molecule travels between collisions is called the free path. The mean free path is simply the average of all the free paths a molecule takes over a given period. It depends on factors such as the size and concentration of the gas molecules and the temperature of the gas. At standard temperature and pressure, or STP, the mean free path of air molecules is approximately 68 nanometers. This incredibly small distance highlights the fact that even in seemingly empty space, gas molecules are constantly colliding with each other. As the pressure of a gas decreases or the temperature increases, the molecules become more spread out and the mean free path increases. Conversely, as the pressure increases or the temperature decreases, the molecules become more tightly packed, and the mean free path decreases. Based on the value of the Knudsen number, we can classify gas flows into four distinct regimes, continuum flow, slip flow, transitional flow, and free molecular flow. In the continuum flow regime, where Kn is much less than 1, the mean free path is much smaller than the characteristic length scale. The gas behaves like a continuous fluid, and we can use classical fluid dynamics equations, such as the Navier-Stokes equations, to describe its behavior. This is the regime in which we typically experience fluids in our everyday lives. As the Knudsen number increases, we enter the slip flow regime, 
where CAN is approximately between 0.01 and 0.1. Here, the mean free path becomes comparable to the length scale of the system, and the no-slip boundary condition of classical fluid dynamics starts to break down. This means that the gas no longer sticks to the surface of the solid boundary, and a velocity slip occurs at the interface. In the transitional flow regime, where KN is approximately between 0.1 and 10, the mean free path is of the same order of magnitude as the characteristic length scale. In this regime, neither continuum nor free molecular models accurately describe the gas behavior. Specialized techniques, such as the direct simulation Monte Carlo or DSMC method, are often required to model gas flows in this regime. At very high Knudsen numbers, where KN is much greater than 1, we enter the free molecular flow regime. Here, the mean free path is much larger than the characteristic length scale. In this regime, molecule-molecule collisions become rare, and the dominant mode of interaction is between gas molecules and the surrounding surfaces. This regime is often encountered in high vacuum systems and in the upper atmosphere. Understanding these flow regimes is crucial in many areas of science and engineering, as it allows us to choose the appropriate model and techniques for analyzing and predicting gas behavior.